Hello, Benjamin Simons here. Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look and we're going to go right deep down into the making of this Captain Montage track that I wrote for Internet Historian's latest video, The Gentleman Pirate, which you can find on his second channel, Incognito Mode. The link to the channel and the video will be down below, as well as a playlist on my channel of all of the tracks that were used in the video. Now, before we dive into it, it wouldn't be YouTube unless I said to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel if you're watching this. And I also stream Monday to Friday, usually on Twitch, which is twitch.tv forward slash Benjamin Simons. And everything you would ever need will be underneath in this little description box. Although it's not hard to find, it's literally just my name. Anyway, first things first, before we dive into how I actually made the track, let me show you how the track was used in the context of the video. Enjoy. We'll make a captain out of you yet, sir. Ready, set, montage. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is that the track that I have here is substantially longer. Now, initially, we wrote a full length three minute or so track with vocals and lyrics, which we went through a bunch of different renditions of, including starting with me doing a demo with the vocals. And then we moved on to Ordinary Things doing his version of it. We had a go with Internet Historian doing a version of it. And then ultimately wound back with it being me doing the vocals. I don't think it was anything to do with them not being good enough. I think it was purely down to the fact that they would rather me do it just because it's probably embarrassing. The lyrics are ridiculous, <laughs> but it's fun. So let me move over here so you can see what we have. All right, here we are. Now, the first thing I really want to point out, other than the guitar solo and the vocals, which I did sat right here, every single instrument on this track is free in Logic Pro X. So you could very easily recreate this track on your own, no problem at all. First off, I've never written synthwave or montage music in my life. And that is part of what's been so fun about working with Internet Historian is that on a day-to-day -day basis, you never know what he's gonna ask for. I've had this as an example. In the video, you'll notice that there's this swing lounge track. I've been asked to write anime music. There's it, it, you never know what you're going to get. Um, and that's what makes part this job so fun and so challenging is that, you know, most of these things that come up, I'm vaguely aware of what they're going to sound like or other versions of it. But in no way do I want to be directly influenced by those things. So I know that there are some fantastic montage tracks, right? I didn't listen to any of them. I was just like, right, well, I can kind of imagine in my head what they sound like. Um, what would I do if it was going to be me writing a montage track? And that's what we've done. So, so we're going to take a look at the intro first of all, um, and I'll show you what we did. What I'm going to do is open up these instruments here so you can see um, all the individual notes that were played. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit, one, one thing at a time, right? So these two things are simply a pair of octaves. And then this is a long bass note. 
And then we've got this classic pop lead. Oops, sorry. I think these two do the same. So it sustains and then this one goes up. Okay, and then we have this um, it's epic brass, lol. It's not very brassy, I'll attest to. Um, and that's essentially the job of that is to um, give you an indication of what the main melody is going to be. So that's basically um, a clue of what the chorus is going to essentially end up being. Um, and then that leads us nicely into our first verse. For the purpose of this, I'm going to mute the, um, mute the, uh, you know, flip in vocals. All right, here's the, uh, here's what this verse sounds like. And if you're interested in the drums, um, I use a couple of different drum kits. Um, this is uh, the Video Star, which I think sounded the most like retro 80s feeling. Um, but it didn't really have, you'll hear them here. Like the toms were fine, but they weren't really like exactly as I was hoping they would be. So I layered them with these drums here, which is just another slightly different drum kit. Um, uh, I didn't enjoy the way the symbol sounded in the video start, so I just found another kit that I could use that would um that would offer me some value there. So musically without any drums at all, the verse sounds like this. And then we've got the second half of the verse. So, you can see the thing that's holding it down is this, this beat, right? I think that's what's giving you the sort of like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's what's giving you the, this feels good, man. Um, and then we've got all these layers on top that are just doing the rest, basically. So then basically we move into the second half of the verse, which is intentionally a bit different. I wanted to feel like it was building. So we go from my intro with no drums at all into the first part of the verse, which has got a lot of what you've heard in the in the intro. And then the second half of the verse, I wanted to add a few extra layers to feel like we were building towards a crescendo of some kind. So you'll notice when we go into the second verse, there are a few extra layers. And here they are. Okay, so difference-wise, musically, there's quite a lot of difference between the two of them. For comparison's sake, here's what's happening in the first half versus the second half in these two instruments. They actually do a lot less. And they're doing less because I've introduced other instruments that are doing more. So we have a few new instruments in the second half that were not in the first half. This is what's been added in terms of additional layers. So when you combine that with what I changed in in what was already there, if you're still with me, we end up with this.
And what I really wanted to make happen that feels important is that as that second that verse is coming to an end, it feels like it's ready to change into something different. It feels like it's musically leading you into the next section, which is important because the next section is the chorus. And the chorus is this, obviously. Now, actually, this section is pretty simple. We've got our, our standard driving bass with a couple of these guys doing the octave above. Some simple chords over the top of it. And all of the work is actually being done by just these three layers here, um, which are playing the melody, which is also what the vocal is singing with a couple of extra little nuances here or there, which sounds like this. simple right if you want to have a look at what that looks like there are the notes there so you can see it's three different octaves and that repeats and then we have this little um this little section here like a bridge i suppose we call it Now that section was important. You'll notice this, that uh, one of the fundamental things that changes is the drums here. Um, now, so far, the drums have all been boom, ba, boom, ba. In this section, I wanted to slow things down a bit and bring it back to that boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 just to show that it's not the same and that when we come back in with a verse, it feels like we're then relifting you back up, getting you ready for what will inevitably, 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 inevitably be, be chorus two. So. This is what the drums are doing here that's different. See, and then it hits you back with that faster double time beat and you feel pretty good about yourself. So musically what's going on here is we have two instruments playing this little lead line combined with the same airy synths we've been using, which are doing um, two different octaves of each other in conjunction with our classic pulse. The only difference is they're not totally in unison with the bass. So you can see that there's some, um, the bass is holding down this quite straightforward rising melody whereas these guys start to go down but I wanted them to make sure that they do something a bit different that gives you a bit of a vibe on the first half but then ultimately end up rising back up to lead you back into going into that second verse now the second verse wise It'd be very simple. It'd be very simple um, to decide to go right. Well, we're back to a verse. I'll just go back here, copy and paste, and then we've got our verse. But we didn't want to do exactly the same thing. I wanted to add a few extra little things. So there are lots of things that are the same. So these guys, um, these leads here, I think are the same. Now, I think if we listen to the second half of the first verse. So it's similar, but what we've done is we've added a couple of different things. Um, so for example, this instrument here wasn't in the, um, wasn't in the first verse at all. And what this instrument is doing is actually, it's highlighting what the main addition is which is we've added um, sort of an additional B line. I'm calling it a B line. It's basically a lead melody that's not actually the lead melody. You'll hear it here. You 
See? So in conjunction... It's also a shorter verse, um, so I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to give it as much time to, to develop as a as a verse. We haven't got like a first half, second half. It's just, you know it's the verse. It feels the same as the verses we've had previously, but it's also got something different in there just to keep piquing your interest and being like, oh, that's slightly different to what we had before. And I think that really helps to keep the listener engaged in what we're doing. I also could be wrong. Like I'm not, I don't even think I'm very good at doing this. I don't think I'm very good at explaining what I'm doing. I, the music just comes out of me. I, I don't know how to explain it to you. I, I hope this is offering you any value whatsoever. Please allow me to have this 30 second blip where I have a moment where I feel like I shouldn't be writing music. Thank you very much for listening. Now, set chorus two. It's exactly the same, so we can move on. The bridge. Exactly the same, but there is a slight difference because this, this bridge is going to take us into our middle eight which is our big solo section, our big peg leg solo. So let me show you how that happens. So you can hear that it's slightly longer than the first bridge. Um, so what we've done is I wanted to, I really like that little chord progression at the end. So this is all the same. And that's where it changes. So now in the original, that would be up there to resolve the note. But I wanted to do is I wanted to cause a bit of a, ooh, that note to me gives you an, oh, something different is coming. What is that note? And it puts you in a non-resolved state, in my opinion. You'll hear it. It feels like, oh, that's not resolving. That's not the natural resolve note. Lovely, lovely. Ooh, unresolved. And then when the when that guitar line comes in and that first big note of the solo hits, you're like, resolve, bang, I'm partying. And that's how we write music. Now, <laughs> the solo, sorry, I'm just gonna smack my mic. The solo itself. If I mute the guitars for a minute, It's essentially the same as verse one. But all I've done is there are a few things here that I've done to help make these sections feel like it belongs to the solo and it's not just the verse with the solo playing over a verse. So there are some notes here that help to accent what the solo is doing. Um, obviously it's not doing all the notes, but it's hitting on some of the key notes in the solo. Uh, well, I hope I'm gonna solo this now and, and play it with this and hope for the goddamn best. You kind of get what I mean. I don't even know if we can really hear that, but trust me, it's helping. So look, I mean, I was a guitarist in a heavy metal band for a long time. By no means am, am I a lead guitar player. I, I love writing riffs and I love writing songs. Don't get me wrong. That's where that's where my, I, I live, if you know what I mean, musically. So if I'm going to write a solo for something, like I, I've written a long solo for this track, what I want to try and do is not make it sound complicated, but make it sound very satisfying. Like I want the notes that I hit and the phrases that I play to sound super complimentary. And I think if you can do that and it sounds super musical, then I think it almost tricks you into thinking that's a good solo. Even though anyone could play that, <laughs> pretty much. Now we go from this first section, which is essentially the, um, the a verse section with a few tweaks into this second part of the solo, which is the, I guess it's like the B section of the solo. And that is essentially a chorus we're riffing over.
Now this bit is different. Um, if we listen to what we've got going on up here. So solo wise so far we've had soloing over the verse, soloing over the chorus. Technically speaking, we're now soloing over a verse again. But what I've done is, is I've kind of tricked you by changing what the bass is doing. It gives you a very different feel, even though instrumentally it's doing almost exactly the same thing. Um, so the bass in the first verse, it's just one note, bro. And then down into the transition into the chorus. Um, but what we've done on the second time around here, when we go into our verse, that feels like the most montage-y bit so far. And the reason we want to keep adding little changes and slight varieties of things and new textures is because it just keeps you guessing keeps you engaged um and keeps hopefully su hopefully surprising you with with new sections following on from that section we have um what we're, we're used to hearing as the bridge <laughs> the extended bridge it's the extended bridge with the ooh. Right, so let's listen to the solo in full. Yeah, that feels different even though it's the verse and there's a guitar harmony there just adds to the feeling of it all you might think the solo would end there but why not keep going for a bit more okay so from here this takes us into our low moment our start over we're going to start afresh we're building it back up again from scratch we've had this huge solo it's gone on for way too long um and now we're going to bring it all the way back down again and essentially what we're doing is is we're bringing it back i'm going to meet these guitars bringing it all the way back to the actual intro of the song um but what we've done is whereas the intro of the song was has no drums at all it was just this basically Musically, it's exactly the same. The only thing we've changed is these um, doo -doo -dooms. I've made them sound a lot more crispy, whereas before they were quite faint because we were sort of subtly introducing the chorus melody. Whereas here, we know the chorus melody and I'm playing it loud and bright because we know it's coming up and I want people to get pumped up and geared up for it. So to add to that level of feeling pumped up and getting in the, in the mood, the drums change. So whereas there are no drums on the intro, this has um, this sort of like stomp. It's just a vibe builder. Then you know where we're going. So in context. You know where we are but it wouldn't be a montage song without a key change and really realistically super easy all you have to do is just move everything up three notes basically i'm pretty sure that's what i did so root note
That's the original. Three notes. And I did that with everything. Just grab all the audio, chuck it up three notes, key change. Now, that doesn't always work. There are times if you're working with chords that it doesn't work. So it's not foolproof. You need to like listen through it just to make sure that nothing sounds super weird. But in the example of this, I moved everything up three notes and I had a key change. Um, now, it is important to note that this is a very special moment. If you believe in stuff, it comes true. Dare to believe in your dreams and they'll believe in you too. That is the absolute legend himself. <laughs> Internet historian giving us a real motivational message about believing in yourself. Um, going into the outro. It's kind of just um, kind of a bit like the intro, but it's just a few sustained notes and you hear that lead line one more time to take you out of the track and you know it's all done with the dump dum 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 and the song is done. Well, look, I couldn't tell you if I taught you anything. I can't tell you if you took anything away from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it interesting. If you did like it, it'd be great if you'd hit that button. The, what's it called? The like button, right? And if you'd like to see any more of this kind of videos for the tracks I've been working on recently with Internet Historian, if you're curious on how I did something, then drop me a comment underneath with what you'd like to see in the future, and I'll get round to making it. I've got nothing better to do. Thanks for hanging out and watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day and stuff. Goodbye.